Okay. Corresponding to a coagulant orbit, we have the formula for the infinitesimal of the coagulant representation can be written in this uh, formula. So uh, on coagulant orbit, omega c, we define the differential to form, which is given by this uh, sigma c, uh, small a d star x c, a d star y c equal to b c x y, which is b c x y, this is an anti-symmetric bilinear form on G defined by this uh, formula, okay? Okay, so by explanation before, so we have some uh, uh, main properties of coagulant orbit. So the first uh, properties, we have that a coagulant orbit has symplectic structure. Why? Because we can define the differential to form a sigma, okay? define it in uh, equation before, which is close and hence defines a G invariant symplectic structure. This is very important because in uh, further uh, information, we have that a coagulant orbit is symplectic uh, manifold. The second case, uh, each coagulant orbit is a symplectic manifold as uh, I said before. Uh, we recall that a symplectic manifold is a fire M sigma, where M is a smooth manifold and sigma is a non-degenerate clause differential to form on M. Okay. And the second uh, and the, the third uh, properties of coagulant orbit, we have that each coagulant orbit always has an even dimension. Why? Because we have that uh, this condition, we define the uh, symplectic structure on the coagulant orbit. Thus, we have uh, each coagulant orbit has an even dimension. Okay, now we are going to the construction of uh, irreducible unitary representation uh, corresponding to the orbit method. For the elementary background, let G be a group and V be a vector space, and uh, it is well known that a a map P is called a linear representation of G in P if we have a homomorphism group from G to uh, automorphism of P. Okay? And this is uh, some remark that a subspace W of P is said to be P invariant if uh, all representation of W is still contained in uh, P for all G in G. Okay? And the second, the linear representation V is said to be irreducible if there is no non-trivial V invariant subspace W in V. Okay, and assume that the space V is uh, equipped by an inner product, then the representation V is said to be unitary if we have uh, this uh, uh, formula holds for all U V in V and for all G in capital G. Now we are arranged how to set the irreducible unitary representation correspond to a coagulant orbit. So we have uh, some step uh, corresponding to our construction. First, we should consider what we call an algebraic polarization uh, small h of G. And this means that uh, an algebraic polarization is a Lie sub algebra. Okay, which is subordinate to a point C in uh, G star. This is the dual space of G. In other words, we, we must uh, have the equation 20. Okay. And the second, we, we, we can compute the dimension of uh, H corresponding to this uh, formula. For dimension of H, this is uh, equal to one half of dimension of coagulant orbit omega at the point C. And we have the addition uh, condition that for exponential algebra G, the polarization H must satisfy a vacancy condition uh, in uh, equation 25, okay? Uh, in this case, P means the, is a natural projection from G star to uh, H star, okay? Now we introduce the notion of index representation. So let H be a closed subgroup and uh, L square X 
uh, where x is quotient space of g over h, b a Hilbert space of square integrable section of line bundle in x, and in this case, dimension x equal to m. Okay, let f be a section whose chart is u. This is consists of x1, x2, and xn, and the section f can be written as this formula. And its inner product in L square X is given in uh, equation 22. Okay, now we let rho be a unitary representation of H release on the Hilbert space uh, HP. So this is corresponding to this uh, representation rho. We shall find a unitary representation G okay, through an extension of the unitary representation of uh, H. Okay. We call it by an index representation denoted by uh, this formula. Okay, let S be a section from U to G. This is the projection map from uh, G to quotient space G over H, and almost all element G in G can be written as uh, this a uh, form G S equal to H S X for X in H and uh, small X in U. Okay. Let we have to let invariant uh, volume uh, in G and H respectively, uh, this uh, uh, left invariant volume. In the parameter of uh, X time U, this uh, element is invariant and looks like in this formula, okay? For a smooth function R in H times U. Okay. Because we have the left invariant uh, in, G, in G, so we have this uh, form and also, by the condition of left invariant in H, we have also this uh, formula. Then we have uh, this uh, formula, R H uh, prime H point X equal to R H point X. Therefore, we have this uh, equation. Now, let D mu S, this is be a measure in U, which is defined by this uh, form where delta G is a modular function in G. Uh, this is very uh, important in representation theory about a modular function. And we get uh, this uh, formula in equation 26, okay? Moreover, since we have this uh, condition, then we have uh, equation 28, where delta G H8, this is the uh, fraction between a modular function G and uh, H, uh, at the point of H, okay? And corresponding our explanation before, so we have the notion what we call the master equation and we denote by equation uh, 30, okay? And uh, finally, we, we come to the unitary index representation in the space uh, L square H SPUS on this uh, space, okay? And we can in, uh, release this uh, representation by this uh, formula, okay? And this representation, of course, is unitary since we have that the norm of PGF, uh, this is equal to norm of, uh, I'm sorry, this is mean uh, square. So this is square and this is equal to uh, F square, okay? Okay, uh, now we give the, an example uh, of our uh, explanation before. So let we have H be the three-dimensional hessen belli group and the Lie algebra of H is uh, H. This is span by X, Y, Z, uh, whose bracket is uh, X and Y equal to Z and its quadrant orbit in this uh, condition. So our goal is how to construct the unitary representation of H using the orbit method. Okay. This is a well-known example of uh, construction of irreducible unitary representation of a hersen belli group corresponding to this quadrant orbit. Okay, so first let's see uh, express as this uh, linear combination, and we fix a point C zero. This is equal to Z, Z star. Okay, in quadrant orbit with the linear functional C on C0 equal to delta, okay? And then we choose an algebraic polarization uh, rho spanned by Y and Z, and we define this linear functional uh, equal to uh, delta gamma, okay? 
And then the one dimensional representation of V, this is exponential of V, is given by this formula. Okay. Our goal is how to extend this representation of exponential V become a representation of Hersenberg-Lie group H. Okay. Okay, first we identify the uh, coset space H over X exponential P with uh, R using this map. Thus, we have a section from quotient space H over exponential P identified with R, okay, given by this formula. And we solve the mass equations, okay, just the uh, multiplication uh, matrix using in uh, uh, before formula. So we compute this uh, variable, gamma, beta, and y, and we have beta equal to b, gamma equal to c plus bx, and y equal to x plus a, okay? Thus, by in this representation, uh, in uh, this uh, representation, so we have the nice formula for the uh, representation of a Lie group expressed in this uh, equation 33, okay. This is just the uh, familiar example. So you, you can uh, apply this uh, orbit method to another uh, case of the Lie groups, okay. Okay, uh, we are coming to the construction of a reduced uh, 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 PASA space, but we have to uh, explain uh, some uh, background. First, let M and N be a smooth manifold with a uh, map F from M to N uh, is of class C1. And a point N in a capital N is said to be a regular value of F if for every M in F star N, the map TMF is surjective, okay? TMF, this is the uh, tangent space map, yeah? tangent uh, map uh, TF with respect to M in M small m in capital M, okay? Next, let f m to m be a diviomorphism, and we define the lift of f, okay? The map t star f, okay? From t star m to t star m, which is t star m mean the cotangent bundle of tm, okay? Define it by t star f alpha m v equal to alpha m tf v where M in M and V in uh, tangent map, TF in fast M, M, okay? And furthermore, we can observe that T star F, okay, is symplectic map, okay. Next, suppose we have an action a P of G on M, and we leave it to obtain the uh, action P, T star G, from T star M to T star M, which is defined by this uh, formula, okay? So first we have the action from uh, uh, G to M, and we have the lift this uh, action, uh, such that we have the action of G to cotangent bundle T star M, okay? And given by this uh, formula, okay? Furthermore, if C in T E G, of course, uh, this is can be identified, but by the Lie algebra of G, then the map P G R cross M, defined by this uh, map T X to P exponential T G X, this is an action. And then the infinitesimal generator of this action corresponding to G can be written in this formula. So this is the factor field corresponding to this action, okay? And, and then we can observe that for case left uh, translation means from uh, uh, LG, G act on uh, himself, uh, G act to G, okay? We have the infinitesimal generator, G, uh, capital G, G. This is equal to the tangent space of a right translation at G at a point E, okay? So we, 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 we remark this uh, condition. Okay, next we come to 
the definition of the momentum mapping uh, uh, we, we, which is uh, needed in our uh, construction so let p omega be a symplectic manifold and g be a Lie group let g act on p this is a symplectic action so mean g act on uh, uh, symplectic manifold p and the map g from v p to g star is said to be momentum mapping if for every g in Lie algebra g we have dg hat guji equal to interior derivative omega guji p where the map g hat guji from p to r is defined by this uh, form okay next a momentum mapping g is called ad star invariant if we have this formula so for for uh, easier uh, realization actually we can uh, draw this uh, map from g to from from map g p to g star and given by a coadjoint action okay coadjoint action uh, ad star g in fast okay of course gx contained in g star and ad star g in fast gx this is contained in a g star okay and of course g p g x p g x contained in uh, p and g p g x contained in g star okay corresponding to the action p on g on m mean g x on m which is lifted to, to to this action so we obtain that uh, new action from g to t star m okay and define it by this uh, formula okay then this action is symplectic and it has a d star equivariant momentum mapping written in equation 37 okay so uh, in the beginning we we define the uh, momentum mapping from symplectic manifold from uh, p to g star but actually uh, if we uh, let g on act on g and we leave this action uh, actually we have this momentum mapping corresponding to this action equal to uh, this equation uh, 37 okay and define it by this uh, uh, form okay okay now we we, we are going to explain the uh, radius fast space corresponding to a uh, symplectic manifold so let p omega be a symplectic manifold and g be a Lie group and let p uh, be a symplectic action which has an eddy star equivariant momentum mapping g p to g star and let mu in g star and let g uh, mu be a stabilizer of uh, Lie group g uh, since g is eddy star equivariant under the stabilizer uh, g mu then the space g in fast mu over g mu this is the uh, quotient space is well defined and we call it the reduced fasa space okay so uh, we, we leave some uh, proof how to uh, uh, compute this uh, reduced fasa space yeah? okay uh, but we we we, we resume uh, how to to find uh, this uh, reduced fasa space and furthermore uh, in next step we shall see the identification of a reduced fasa space of a Lie group by a coagent orbit okay this is the identification of a reduced fasa space uh, using uh, the orbit uh, method so first let g be a Lie group and we have an action from g to himself given by left uh, translation so uh, lambda g equal to lg and we leave the action lambda to obtain the action lambda t star okay on t star g okay. we have the reason how to uh, leave this action from g to himself to obtain this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, action by uh, lift okay by lift this condition the momentum mapping of this action okay is uh, written by this formula t star g to g star where the star is the uh, dual factor space of the algebra G and define it by uh, G alpha G Guji. Okay. And we have that G alpha G equal to T E uh, R G star alpha G. Okay. And this is the uh, tangent map 
at point uh, E of uh, right translation RG. Okay. Next, let mu uh, be contained in G star, be a regular value for, for, for G. Okay. And we obtain uh, J in fast mu. This is equal to the space to the uh, set of alpha G in T star G. Okay. With alpha G T E R G Guji equal to mu Guji for all Guji in G, which is the graph of the right invariant uh, one from alpha mu. Okay. And alpha mu G, this is equal to T star G R G in fast mu equal to mu T G R G in fast. Okay, and moreover, the stabilizer of uh, G can be written in this formula. Okay, so we have the stabilizer of uh, G mu, okay, uh, released by the uh, left translation. So G mu act on G star G in fast mu by left translation. Okay, therefore, we have that uh, the radius pass space for a Lie group G, J in fast mu over G mu can be identified by this uh, quotient space, G over G mu. And I already explained it before that uh, G over G mu, this is can be uh, uh, identified by the coagent orbit. I'm sorry, this is AD star, AD star G mu. So this is coagent orbit uh, of uh, uh, G on mu. And which is nothing but the coagent orbit of G at uh, mu in G star, okay. So this is the uh, final uh, explanation. So for a Lie group, uh, for the stable uh, choice, we can identify that uh, the reduced pass space is nothing but uh, the coagent orbit of a Lie group G at a point uh, uh, mu in uh, uh, G star. Okay. Okay. And this is the uh, main uh, references. So in this uh, lecture, we. Uh, actually take some uh, material from these uh, books and uh, the paper. So from Abraham uh, and Marsden, uh, Foundation of Mechanic in Second Condition. This is the nice book, yeah. Uh, even though this is the old book, but uh, this is very uh, complicated. Uh, it's very clear uh, explanation about uh, uh, Lie groups and uh, correspondition to cause of condition of uh, mechanics. And then this is the exponential uh, correspond to harmonic analysis of uh, exponential uh, solvability group. And uh, Kirillov, this is uh, the nice uh, book, uh, lecture on the orbit method, how to uh, construct uh, the irreducible unitary representation corresponding to uh, the orbit method. Okay, thank you very much for uh, attention. Uh, we uh, back to a moderator. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Edi Kurniadi, for your interesting uh, presentation. Okay, now we come to Q and A session. So once again, uh, if uh, any participants have a question, any question regarding the talk, uh, you might write your question on the chat menu, or you can just. Uh, raise your hand and then I will allow you to speak uh, directly to Dr. Edi. Okay, so uh, maybe here uh, on the chat menu, we, are, we still don't have any question yet. Uh, but uh, Dr. Edi, so I think I have one question. So regarding your uh, the dimension that you talked before about uh, the, the orbit space, uh, the, the co-orbit co -orbit space, if I'm not wrong. The dimension is always even, right? Okay. And yes. since uh, uh, any radius uh, phase space can be identified by uh, the co orbit, so the dimension is also even. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so my question is uh, uh, how about uh, the reverse? So if we have any, so from, let's say we have any n even number, can we construct a, a radius phase space of dimension n, something like that? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for okay. the uh, nice question. So, uh, we we have uh, done yet about the condition for the converse. So, if we have the uh, uh, coagent orbit, is can be ca can be identified by the uh, radius pass space. I I don't know about about that because 
we can identify the uh, reduced fascia space for a leak group G in uh, under condition. So not all uh, uh, reduced fascia space uh, can be identified by but the coagulant orbit. So we can we must choose the uh, regular value, regular value. So we can see here. So uh, this is important. Uh, mu in G star uh, as a regular value for for the momentum uh, mapping G to to identify the uh, reduced fascia space for uh, uh, quadrant orbit. Okay. So the converse is uh, I I don't know the, the converse. Uh, we, we don't have yet uh, uh, investigate uh, more about a uh, condition. Maybe this is the uh, nice comment for me. So we can uh, investigate more about uh, your uh, question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adi. So here, I think uh, on the chat menu, we have a question from uh, Professor Job uh, Nebel. So uh, he said that uh, I think you can uh, also associate a moment mapping to star products on coadjuvant orbits. Uh, this is due to Hamachi. If, uh, he remember correctly, he said something like that. Maybe you have uh, comments on this uh, question or uh, comment? Okay. okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, I don't know yet about the, uh, the uh, Hamachi, uh, but uh, in, in this coagulant orbit, that's just the action from the uh, Lee group G on the uh, G star. Means that the coagulant orbit, just the orbit of uh, Lee group G on the space G star. But I don't know about the, the Hamachi, maybe the uh, uh, Professor Job Nabil can ex ex explain about the Hamachi. I, I don't know yet about uh, that. But means the coagulant orbit, just the action of the uh, Lee group G on the space uh, G star. Okay. okay, thank you. So, so, so the, the star of the coagulant orbit come from the dual of the adjoint, adjoint action, like, like that. So first we have the adjoint action from G on the Lie algebra G, okay? We have the adjoint action uh, notion. And then if we have the, and we have the, we let the Lie group G X on G star. So we have the notion of a coagulant, of, uh, coagulant action. I mean like, 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 like that, I, I, I have a uh, know about that. I'm sorry uh, for the, the Hamachi, I, I don't know about that, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Adi. So here we have follow-up comment from uh, Professor Job Nabel. So I, uh, he said that, uh, I mean, uh, here the star product like in the lecture from uh, Dr. Balsum. Okay. So, yeah. So maybe it is related uh, to the one that uh, Dr. Alex uh, I said before in his uh, first uh, lecture series, right? If I'm not wrong, maybe it is related to uh, that one, something like that. Yes. Okay, so I hope uh, uh, that uh, will answer the question or comment from uh, Prof. Job uh, Nabel. Okay, so here we have another question from Mr. Andika. So he said that we all know that uh, in quantum me uh, algebraic mechanics, uh, there are many theories that can describe the relationship between mathematics and physics. So like, do we have uh, like some examples or uh, the, uh, how, how their uh, relationship with uh, applied mathematics in solving uh, a real problem that occur? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much for the questions, yes. Yes, actually, we have the uh, relation between uh, mathematics and uh, physics, and especially in uh, my uh, lecture today. So we have the notion of uh, passa space, passa space in uh, in physics, but in in mathematics we can identify passa space in physics as the uh, cotangent bundle. Okay. So we have the uh, collection of the uh, tangent space denoted by uh, uh, tangent bundle. And if we if we take the dual of the tangent bundle, so we have the uh, 
cotangent bundle. So cotangent bundle means the set of all uh, uh, one form, one form in M, and and in phase six, uh, this uh, cotangent bundle is identified as the uh, fascia space. This is one one example in my uh, lecture today. But for for more information about the uh, relation, so you can read uh, the nice uh, reference. So you can uh, uh, read some uh, relation between uh, uh, physics in and mathematics correspond to the orbit method. So this could develop some. We have some uh, notion uh, correspond uh, between uh, physics in uh, uh, mathematics. So please. Uh, 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 observe some uh, relation for further information and in this uh, book. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the answer, Dr. Eddy. Yeah, I hope uh, it will answer the question from uh, Mr. Andika. So here we have another question from Dr. Alex. So is there any advantages or disadvantages uh, that you have uh, encountered in producing adjoint orbits of via Kirolovs and via moment maps. Okay, thank you. Okay, some some advantages of uh, uh, the orbit method. Uh, first, we can release for all early groups, for all early groups. So uh, as already explained before, we can take uh, another early group. In example, we 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 I I have already given in the toy example for the case of Hartson Belly group. But uh, this is still uh, can apply for another league group, for example, uh, in Jacobi group, uh, affine league group, or uh, diamond league group. And this is very nice. And of course, this is, uh, Mr. Alec, this is very interesting. If we, uh, for example, uh, in the uh, last uh, lecture, you explained in quantization of uh, uh, how to construct the unitary representation, maybe we, we, we can compute how about the intervening operator between uh, quantization uh, method and the orbit method. This is the first. And the second, uh, and the, the, this end page of this uh, uh, orbit method is, is very uh, complicated uh, uh, calculation, especially how to find the coagent orbit. For example, in, in, in my case, when we compute for the four dimensional uh, uh, probinously group uh, just for for uh, dimension but uh, the the computation of the the orbit method uh, for me is is very uh, difficult how to find uh, about it this is one one uh, ad page of this end page maybe you can read more about the condition in uh, this uh, kirillov books okay. thank you uh, dr alex thank you dr eddie for the answer so i hope uh, it will answer uh, the question from uh, Dr. Alex. Okay, so here I think they, that's all. Uh, okay, so I think he is agree. Uh, Dr. Alex is also agree that it is hard to compute for higher dimension. Okay, so maybe uh, also I have uh, one uh, question related to the one that uh, the, one, uh, the question that asked by uh, Mr. Andika. So uh, the reason that uh, why we uh, denote the space as reduced space space is come from is, is coming from uh, P six. Is that correct? So the notation yes. is from P six. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So I think uh, that's it uh, for. Q&A session. So once again, if you have any question, you may uh, raise your hand or you can write your uh, question on the chat menu. Okay, maybe we can wait for one or two minutes. Is that okay, uh, Dr. Eddy? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Apa ya? Enggak. Okay, so uh, I think that is from for the Q&A session. So in case if, 
any participant still have a question, uh, you may ask uh, Dr. Eddie uh, later, maybe after this session or maybe outside this uh, event. Okay, so once again, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Eddie Kurniadi, for your presentation. Okay, right now uh, we will continue uh, to the second session. So the second session is uh, a lecture uh, that will be delivered by Mr. Francis de Deloro. So, but before we start uh, the, the lecture, uh, allow me to introduce our speaker. Okay, so Mr. Francis de Deloro uh, is from uh, Ateneo de Naga University, Naga City, Philippines. And in this uh, lecture, he will share with us uh, his, maybe I think his research on Wigner whale formalism on finite quantum systems. So his present occupation, so he is uh, an assistant professor in the Department of Mathematics at the New Denaga University, Philippines. And currently he is uh, also, a, I think a, a PhD candidate, a straight program under job A enable PhD. Uh, in uh, Ateneo de Malina uh, University, Philippines. And he got uh, his bachelor degree in 2006 at Ateneo de Naga University and also got the master in 2008 at the same university. And he has uh, at least uh, two publications in 2019 and 2020. So about frame quantization and finite quantum systems and star products formulas on finite groups. And he also uh, has attend, uh, attended some uh, webinar and talks and have uh, and has given some uh, talks yeah, during uh, 2008 to 2021. Okay, so without further ado, uh, please welcome uh, Mr. Francis to deliver your presentation. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, introduction. So can you see now my uh, presentation? Yes, I can see it. So uh, before I start, so I want to thank uh, Dr. Inda in inviting us for this lecture series. And uh, so parang, uh, we are happy that uh, we can share some of our uh, work in uh, the Algebra Research Group in the Universitas Gajamad. So my presentation is uh, outlined in this uh, six. So we start with the phase space for discrete systems. So it's actually a uh, literature works that uh, is currently available on uh, discrete systems. And then the Bigner Vile formalism, which is the idea for the concept that we use in trying to, map, to come up with uh, results. And uh, third is the representation and character theory, wherein uh, this will be our main tools in our uh, work. And the objects or the ingredients are uh, signal analysis and frames. And then the outcomes, which will be uh, shown later. So uh, as a motivation, uh, we always start with the Heisenberg group. And in the Heisenberg group, uh, there is this computation about expected value given by this uh, formula. So the W sub sigma here is the vial transform. And the script W is the Wigner functions, which is defined by this particular equation. So we note that the row 
here is the unitary representation of the group, which we know is the Schrodinger representation in, uh, with respect to the Heisenberg group. So uh, we also have this uh, motivations that uh, uh, in today's uh, works, there are uh, advances in technology. So therefore, there are uh, finite quantum systems that are happening or that are working in these current technologies. So such as the quantum codes, the open quantum system. So there is this uh, author, so Bianucci, Lopez, and Aulita. The phase space representation of quantum computers. We also have this uh, quantum computation and uh, quantum information theory with pass as the leading uh, authors. We also have this uh, quantum state tomography by Leonard, Miguel and Pass, and quantum teleportation by Bennett, uh, Pass, and this uh, Hanior Zick. So um, we also have this discrete quantum systems, which approximate the standard uh, continuous quantum systems, and they are amenable to uh, computations and uh, simulations. Now, it's uh, mathematically interesting that uh, there are parallel developments with the theory of frames. So these frames actually are the discrete versions of uh, coherent states. And these uh, frames are very useful in signal analysis and in other engineering fields. And uh, why are we doing this work? Because uh, we are uh, agreeing in this uh, connections or relationships between discrete and continuous. So an example of that is the number theory. We use the zeta functions to study the distribution of brands. So these are some of the motivations that we have. So uh, to discuss, there are phase space for discrete systems are available. Um, there is this uh, finite unitary operator basis by Schwinger. So uh, the idea is any is prime, and to cons uh, we, they construct a finite system of unitary operators that satisfies a vile system. But uh, Wouters, uh, they have this n by n i of points or grid. And these other authors also have the same approach as uh, Wouters. Uh, for uh, O'Connell and Wigner, uh, they discuss about discrete spin one of variables and uh, discrete uh, phase space on finite fields by uh, Gibbons and the others. We also have this uh, infinite lattice by uh, Hinarios. The phase angle variables by Vaccaro and Peck, the action angle variables, the finite groups as phase space. So these authors, they were our uh, uh, main uh, authors. So their works are the works that we are adopting. And uh, we also have this method of frames on finite groups by Bordas, Gazo, and the others. So uh, to show you some of their works, so there is this uh, paper by Bizarro. So he has this idea of rotational Wigner function, and it's given by this formula. So here the m is uh, m is discrete, and uh, theta has a period to pi. In uh, Leonard's paper, they also have this idea of the Wigner function for odd-dimensional systems, and they are given by this particular equation W, wherein the W tilde is expressed uh, by this particular equation. Um, in Ruse's paper, they also have this discrete Wigner function, which is given by this row. And uh, in Shatterberry's uh, paper, the Wigner distribution is given by this uh, W. So these are just some of the 
attempts in uh, trying to come up with a mechanics or spe uh, specifically the uh, quantization on uh, finite quantum systems. So our uh, uh, formalism that we are adopting is actually based on uh, Chaturvedi, Mukunda, and then Buddha's papers. There are actually four or five uh, uh, main uh, formalism, Dignar Vile formalisms. So the first is from the, the discrete Heisenberg group, wherein the main authors are Schwingers. Uh, there, they, there, uh, there are also direct formulation that are applied on face and angle. So the authors there are Berry, Lassen, uh, Leonard, and others. They also have uh, Wouters, who works on Royer operators. And then uh, Leonard uh, works on tomograms. And uh, Marmo, they also use that, but they have this abstraction on that matter. So our work uh, mainly adapts the works of Chaturvedi, uh, Mukundu, and uh, Guder in this case. So we have here a finite group G, and we define the L2G as the set of all functions, uh, the complex uh, value functions uh, F that maps the group elements to the complex numbers. And we define here the position states that is uh, represented by this uh, ket x. So this is the Dirac notation on ket x, which is equal to delta sub x, where x is a group element. And the momentum states are represented by ket jmn, wherein it's equal to the square root of the uh, uh, dimension of the unitary representation over the order of the group and uh, summation of the A sub J's or A raised to J's uh, sub MN's uh, ket X. So the A sub J's here are the matrix elements of the unitary irreducible representation rho raised to J in some orthonormal basis uh, A sub K. And we uh, give a highlight in this generalized Fourier transform operator. So F is a uh, uh, operator from script F to script F. And it's given by this particular uh, expression. So now the state space of uh, the quantum mechanics is the group algebra script F, wherein the, posi uh, the position measurement is denoted by this quantum operation Q hat or Q uh, script Q, whose operational elements are given by this uh, ket G bra G, where A and G is a group element. And the momentum measurement are this quantum operation uh, script P with operational elements uh, ket J M N bra J M N with this corresponding values for J, M and N. And uh, from that, we define here this sequential position momentum measurement, E, script E, which is equal to the uh, composition of script P and Q. And from that, we have uh, shown here that this uh, E has the operational elements uh, given by this. So uh, we also have this uh, sequential momentum position measurement. So this is the adjoint of E, and it's equal to the composition of Q and P, who's also, uh, who has also this corresponding operational elements. Now, uh, the operational elements of uh, script E has this uh, uh, W. So uh, the bigger function here will be given by this. So the D, D the, the capital D, are the uh, unitary inducible representations of the group. And uh, from that, we give a remark that the product of W, the adjoint of that in W is equal to this. And uh, W times the adjoint will also be equal to this. And uh, given this A, which is an element of the script F, then we define the 
we define A as this one. It's the trace of the uh, operators AW applied to G, J, M, N, which is equivalent to this particular uh, expression. So the probability distribution on discrete phase space is given by this. So it depends on uh, G and then J, M, N. And uh, we denote that the position marginal distribution is uh, given by P sub rho applied to G, which is actually equal to this one, G rho G. And the position or the momentum marginal distribution will uh, also equal to this one. So from that, uh, we are now ready to use or uh, use the tools that we have the representation in particle theory. And uh, we try to at least review a bit about this uh, too. So we uh, uh, present this definition of a representation or linear action. So a representation of G in the vector space V over F is a group homomorphism pro from G to the general linear uh, group applied to B. So we note here that the linear action of G given by rho is written in this way. So GW is rho of G applied to W, which is an element of the vector space V. So the GLV here is the group of all invertible linear transformations of the vector space V. And uh, the dimension of V is the degree of uh, rho, which is the unitary uh, irreducible representation. So if E sub I is a basis of V, then we uh, have these functions a sub ij so they are complex valued functions and they is uh, they are denoted by this so rho of x uh, e sub j is equivalent to this summation and uh, the matrices a sub x defines a homomorphism from g to the group of all uh, invertible n by n matrices over c and we also have this character of rho. So the character is actually a complex valued function that maps, that maps the group elements to the trace of rho. So the trace is actually the sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix A. So that's the idea of the path. So example, if we have a cyclic group G and it's generated by an element X, the orders, the orders D, and if zeta is equal to the exponential of 2 pi i raised to d or 2 pi i over d, and it's a primitive d root of unity, and for k, there is a representation chi sub k of degree one, such that chi sub k of x is equal to zeta raised to k. And we note here that these representations are pairwise non-isomorphic. We also have this linear action of a group on H uh, not equal to zero is said to be irreducible if the only G invariant subspaces of H are zero and H. And uh, we note that uh, it's actually the span of GW where G is a group element is equal to the uh, Hilbert space H. So, uh, the objects that we are working is about uh, the frames which are used in signal analysis. And uh, this is some of the definition. So we have a Hilbert space H and F, which is uh, given by F sub J for uh, some index set J. So this is a frame for H. If there are constants uh, A, B, so A, B are finite such that A times the norm of F is uh, necessarily equal to the summation of the uh, inner product between F and FJ squared uh, and it's less than or equal to B times the norm of F. So if there are uh, uh, finite numbers A and B or constants A and B, then uh, we say that F here is A uh, frame for the Hilbert space H. We give a remark that if A is equal to B, 
then we call F a type fake. So specifically, an A type fake. If uh, A equals one, then uh, then it's a uh, one type frame. Uh, we also uh, name it a finite type frame when the index of J is uh, finite. So for example, if we have U sub one, U sub two, U sub three, and they are equally spaced uh, unit vectors in uh, R2, and R theta is a rotation to an angle theta, then we, if we can form a, a type frame, so these are not unitary equivalent. So, kasi it will depend on the theta. So, this is the illustration. So, if this, if, if theta is pi over 12, so this is the corresponding frame given by this. If theta is pi over 6, so we have this one. And then, if theta is pi over 3, then this is the corresponding frame for that particular group. So there are some uh, functions, operators, that we have to define. So if H is separable Hilbert space and we have a frame, then we define the Bessel map or the analysis operator for F. So it's the linear function L from the Hilbert space H to uh, L. L2, small l of uh, L2 of j, and it's defined by this particular equation. We also have the synthesis operator, and it's equal to the adjoint of L, and it's it satisfies this property. And uh, the composition of that is what we call the frame operator. And the frame op operator satisfies this particular uh, equation. Uh, we also note that uh, we have here a diagramian operator, which is actually equal to G, uh, which is the L and then L, uh, the adjoint of it. So the group frame, so what is a group frame? So if we have a finite G, then a frame for uh, the Hilbert space H is a group frame, or we call it G frame. If there exists a unitary representation rho from the group G to the unitary uh, of H, such that uh, G uh, phi sub H is equal to rho of G phi sub H, which is equivalent to uh, phi sub G H for all uh, G H that are uh, elements of uh, G. So for example, if we have a, a cyclic group of order n and uh, denote the representation as uh, this one row, this is the representation. So we denote the elements as a raised to j w, which is equal to this. And we can uh, find that the group frame are the n equally spaced unit vectors, c sub n frame, uh, given by gw where G is an element of this uh, C sub N. So we also define this central group frame. So a central group frame is a G frame, which is uh, it's said to be central if there is a uh, complex value function V, wherein this is true. And this one is a class function. When you say class function, uh, it's constant on the conjugacy classes of the group G. So in trying to express what a central type group frame is, so we use this formula. So uh, phi, sub, phi sub chi is equal to the square root of the chi sub one, or chi sub chi of the uh, identity element over the group order. And then these are the unitary representation or unitary irreducible representation of the group. And uh, this resolution of identity is a very useful tool or theorem. So if you have a finite frame F, then the following equation holds. So one over A of the summation of this uh, ket J bra J as uh, J is an element of uh, J is equivalent to the identity. And we also note this uh, irreducible G frames. So this is actually the theorem that would give us the supply of frames 
So if we have a unitary action uh, of a group G on H, and that is irreducible, then uh, GW is a type G frame for H. And uh, we say F is equal to the dimension of H over uh, the order of G times one over the norm of W and summation of F, GW, GW, for all F in the Hilbert space. So example, if we have a uh, non-abelian group of uh, orthogonal matrices that is generated by uh, A, so A here is a rotation through 2 pi over 3, and B is a reflection in the y-axis. So in CBN, uh, there is this uh, uh, corresponding values for A and B so in terms of its matrices. Then the frame will be given by this. So GW, G is an element of D3. So the frames are W, A, W, A squared, W, and so on and so forth. So this is actually the inducible D3 frame for every non-zero vector, w, which is an element of R. Now, the uh, main idea that we are using in our work is this uh, frame quantization and star product. So uh, we try to find the Wigner function. After finding the Wigner function, uh, at first we find a frame from the theorem. So we uh, have a group. We get the group frames of that. And we try to uh, uh, use that particular frame, find the Wigner function, and then apply it so that we can uh, find the Wigner transport, uh, get the composition of the two operators, and uh, that will uh, give us the star product. And after that, uh, we find the uh, quasi probability distributions from that particular Wigner function. So this is the idea. So if you have a unitary irreducible representation, rho of G and H, and we are given a finite group, tight group frame, then the, these are, this is the idea that we're adapting. So a particular complex valued function F, so F here is an element of L2G, which is equal to the Hilbert space H, H there is a corresponding uh, operator W sub F. And W sub F is equal to D. D is the dimension of the unitary irreducible representation over the group uh, order times the summation of this F sub K and uh, ket K drop K. So from that frame quantization, we can also have this frame quantization so it's via the wavelet transform, W. So it's given by F uh, sub A of G, and it's given by this one in terms of the traits. So from that, we have this frame condition. We can show the star product in terms of this one. So the composition of two W sub F is actually equal to the star product of this particular uh, functions F. So uh, the results of that we have, so if we have this idea, concept, so uh, this is the frame and uh, quantization and star product for D8. So D8 is actually the uh, dihedral group of, uh, it's actually uh, a square. So the projections, the, uh, reflections, rotations on a square. So if we have here the two-dimensional unitary irreducible representation of D8, and we have a fixed vector uh, C, and uh, we use the standard basis of RP, then we have this particular type group frame for L2 of D8. So this one is for the rotation subgroup. This is for the reflection subgroup for D8. So for the rotation subgroup, so if we let uh, get K equal to this one, so these are the corresponding uh, 
frames for 0, 1, 2, 3. And we have this particular W subject. Note that this is a uh, two by two matrix whose elements or in, uh, matrix entries are given by this one. So these are the uh, standard basis. So E1 and then WF and then E1 and so on and so forth. So that our um, Wigner transform is given by this particular two by two matrix. So if we uh, get a composition of this uh, Wigner transform, two of this, then we can get the star product. So we'll get the star product of uh, two Wigner uh, transform. And this is the corresponding star product of the Wigner transforms. So this is in L2 of the Again, this is a two by two matrix whose uh, matrix entries are this one. We also have this uh, frame quantization. So for a general dicyclic group, so we have this uh, Wigner transform for rotation subgroup. So this is for the rotation subgroup. And the corresponding star product is given by this. Again, this is the two by two matrix. For uh, the reflection subgroup, we have this. And uh, the corresponding star product is also equivalent to this one. So we know that uh, they only differ in the, this one is sine squared alpha, but this one it's cosine squared alpha. So that's the only difference between the two. So the trigonometric functions, uh, uh, it's the only difference between the rotation and the reflection. So this is again the star product. For the dicyclic group, the dicyclic group is actually a group we're in, uh, this is the, if n is actually two, so this is a four, the order of this is four times the, uh, the number of n here. So the simplest dicyclic uh, group is the quaternion group. So if n equals two, then uh, dip two is isomorphic to the quaternion skew eight. And uh, again, this is the Wigner transform for the two-dimensional unitary irreducible representation that is not arising from uh, D2N. Kasi the dicyclic group, there are uh, uh, one-dimensional unitary representation and two-dimensional unitary irreducible representations. Uh, uh, the one dimensional, the number of one dimensional unitary uh, representations will depend if n is even or odd. If uh, uh, on the corresponding two dimensional unitary irreducible representation, there are those uh, two dimensional that comes from the dihedral group. So that is why for this particular Wigner transform, we consider the two dimensional. Uh, unitary irreducible representation that does not uh, arise from the basic And this is the corresponding Wigner transform. And the corresponding star product is this one. And so it's actually a two by two uh, matrix. And the corresponding uh, uh, here, we also consider, uh, we note here that this is the usual uh, frames that we got. But uh, for this particular uh, frame quantization and star product, we use here the central type frames. So the central type frames that uh, we can find from this two dimensional unit rep will be a uh, uh, four by one. And the corresponding uh, Wigner transform is a four by four matrix whose uh, entries are this one. So again, if we get the store product, then we have this again, four by four, but these are the matrix entries. So, and from that uh, uh, store product, Wigner transform, we can, almost, we can actually find the quasi probability distributions. So these are the wigner weil formula for expected value, uh, value, so this one. And for the computations, so from the 
uh, Vignar Transform, which uh, we got from the uh, D8. So these are the corresponding uh, Vignar quasi probability distributions. So, yeah, so that's the idea. This are, these are the references, and uh, I'd like to end uh, this by thank, uh, thank, uh, giving thank you to all of you for listening to my talk. So, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Francis, for the nice uh, talk. Okay, so now we come to the Q&A session. So once again, if uh, any of you have uh, questions, uh, you might uh, write it on the chat menu or you can raise your hand so you can uh, ask uh, Mr. Francis uh, directly. So here we have, I think on the chat menu, we already have a question from uh, Professor Inda. So she asks, uh, are quantization and dequantization uh, some kinds of uh, dualization? Thank you. Uh, quantization and dequantization is like, uh, maybe that's, it's like the dualization. So uh, quantization is from uh, a function to a certain operator. Uh, the dequantization is the, uh, so we, when we want to uh, find a, the corresponding function of an operator, then we use the dequantization. So it's something like the dualization, something like, but it's like retrieving back the, the function from the operator uh, given by that particular function. Okay, thank you uh, for the answer. I hope uh, it will answer uh... The question from uh, Professor Ina. Okay, so here uh, I think I also have a question uh, regarding uh, the frame uh, frame of any Hilbert space. Does it always exist for any Hilbert space? Uh, we we have this. Uh, we have uh, since we are considering finite cases. So there's a there's an actual. Uh, uh, L2 for that, and that L2 is actually the Hilbert space. And uh, since uh, we are only uh, uh, considering the finite case, then uh, there is always a Hilbert space for, uh, for that. And frames are always available. So we just have to find uh, them. And uh, the corresponding, the, the crucial part there is finding the uh, unitary and reducible representation that is uh, connected with that particular group. So that's, I think, is the uh, important part in considering that. Okay, thank you. And also uh, for the tight frame, is that also similar? So is it always exist or maybe we only have some condition so that it is to exist for uh, some Hilbert space, something like that? Uh, for the central uh, tight frames, uh, it must uh, it must uh, satisfy the condition that uh, the complex valued function is a class function, meaning uh, uh, the corresponding function uh, no there uh, in some other uh, literatures, it's it's the chi, it's the character chi. So the chi must be, uh, the chi is actually an example of that particular class function. So uh, it's uh, constant in the conjugacy classes of a particular group. So uh, we can consider the character as, uh, as the function nu in that particular, or v in that particular uh, definition of the central type. Ah, okay, so, so we can always, uh, uh, so the, the, the type of frame uh, may, may exist under some certain conditions, so yes. something like that. Yeah, yeah, correct, thank you. Okay, so is there any question from uh, participants? 
you may uh, raise your hand and then ask uh, Mr. Francis uh, directly, or you can uh, write your question on the chat menu. Okay. Also, uh, Mr. Francis, uh, related to the uh, the example that you uh, gave before uh, in your uh, talk, so you give an example about uh, frame quantization and star product on uh, dihedral groups, right? So, do you have any uh, frame quantization and star product for other finite groups, something like that? Uh, we are actually considering the uh, alternating group. Uh, A4, uh, A5, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then we also have this S4. So we cannot generalize it to Sn because of the complexity of the uh, unitary irreducible representation for each. Although there is a uh, general uh, uh, UIR for uh, Sn, but the corresponding group actions will depend on the value of n. So yeah. We are also considering that. We also have this uh, sum for cyclic groups and uh, uh, the tensor product of some cyclic groups. Uh, we, we consider these particular groups because we, we are trying to look into a possible uh, uh, applications where in uh, these particular groups are found in the uh, platonic solids. So maybe it will have some particular applications in, in that particular platonic solids, but, but uh, we don't know it yet. Okay, thank you. So for alternating groups, uh, I mean, in, in some simple, uh, some small cases of N, uh, is there any kind of pattern for the frame quantization or star products or they have? Um, um, for they small have no pieces pattern. we have, to say, uh, we are considering the dimension also of the unitary irreducible representation. So uh, say for example, for uh, S4, the conjugacy classes is, uh, uh, there are one dimensional, there are also two-dimensional and uh, three-dimensional. So uh, for each dimension, we are computing for the frames. So it will depend on the uh, dimension. So for every dimension, there is a corresponding frame. And for every frame, there is a corresponding uh, Wigner transform and star path. So uh, it's not only, or it, it will not only depend on the UIR, it will, onload, it will also depend on the degree of that particular UIR. So for a given group, we can actually find uh, a lot of frames that will depend on the uh, action, meaning the representation and the dimension of that particular representation. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Francis. Okay, so I think there is uh, no other uh, question on the chat menu. So I think uh, this is uh, the end for the Q&A session. So once again, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Francis for his uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, so now uh, we come to the photo session. So right now I would like to invite uh, all of our, our distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen, to turn on your camera so that we can take uh, the picture together. Okay, maybe we will start taking uh, the pictures, uh, oh, one minute, uh, maybe 10.41.
Okay, so please be ready. Uh, and also, uh, I have uh, write the link for the SE certificate. So for participant, you can uh, fill uh, the form using that link to get uh, the E certificate. Okay, right now I will take uh, the picture. So please uh, still uh, turn on your camera. And uh, say cheese. Okay, thank you very much, uh, everyone. Okay, you may uh, turn off your camera. Okay, so now uh, we come to the announcement and closing session. So I would like uh, to invite uh, Professor Indah Emilia Vijayanti to give uh, some announcement and closing this uh, lecture series. Thank you. Prof. Indah, time is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mas Awan. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you very much to the, all the speakers. The, there are Dr. Muhammad Farhani Rashid, and also Dr. Alexander Basumo. Today we are, uh, we are here. And also for Dr. Larni Natividad, yeah, uh, also join with us today. And uh, to Dr. Eddie Kurniadi and uh, Mr. Francis Deloro. Yeah, thank you very much for the interesting uh, topics uh, during three months uh, since June, July, and now August. I I, I hope uh, we can learn to get, uh, something new together, uh, especially in this topic. And also, I would like to thanks to the moderators, uh, Dr. Madi Tandrawan today, and also Dr. Uha Isnaini, and uh, ben, Madi Beni Prasetya, MSE. Yeah, uh, our moderators for three lectures. And also for um, Algebra Research Group members, Gajah University, and uh, also for the Department of Mathematics and uh, our faculty, uh, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, uh, Universitas Gajah Mada. I would like to thank for the support. Yeah, uh, and also for all participants. Uh, I uh, very, I'm personally very glad that there are many participants today and also for the three lectures, uh, more than 40 participants here. Yeah. Uh, so it's a uh, very, very interesting and uh, I am happy for that. And also for the, all organizers, yeah. Uh, I hope uh, we can make a further discussion after these lectures. Maybe in, um, we also uh, we can learn together, we can study together, and maybe we can make uh, some collaborations between maybe Indonesia and Filipina, or maybe uh, uh, between universities in Indonesia, or we make between uh, lecturers and students or something like this. Yeah, uh, uh, this activities is not stop today, but we will continue in the next next step, next follow up. Yeah. I think uh, that's all that I would like to share to all of you. And once again, thank you very much. And see you in the next uh, scientific activities, maybe in virtual meeting or maybe in the real meeting. We hope, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Mas, Mas Sawan, saya kembalikan ya, so time to the moderators. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Indah Emilia Wijayanti. Okay, so this is the end of our lecture series. So once again, I would like to thank our uh, distinguished uh, guests, our two speakers today, for today's, uh, Dr. Eddie and Mr. Francis, for your 
wonderful presentation. I hope we can uh, learn together and maybe sometime we can uh, make some collaboration, not only uh, in the university level, maybe in more higher level, something like that. Okay, so this is the end for our uh, lecture series. Once again, I would like to thank uh, distinguished guests, uh, all participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much. Uh, stay healthy and see you again in other uh, scientific event. Okay, good morning, everyone. And see you. See you. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you. Terima kasih, Prof. Bye bye, everyone. Terima kasih. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Prof. Ya.